and grow YouTube show. You're, you're mentioning the, the, um, proportions, the, the tips, the tricks, the knowledge that we might not have basic interior design tips. Can we start there? Of course. Yeah. So there's so many tips that it can be overwhelming, Mm -hmm. but the first thing is don't be afraid to go big. You know, so many people buy lots of little pieces of furniture because they're afraid that something may not fit or it may be overwhelming, but then they buy one small shelf that holds some of the books, but not all the books. So then they have to get another small shelf that holds some of the books, but not all the books. And then they find themselves getting a large bookcase. And now the space is just cluttered with pieces, none of which are doing the full job. Mm -hmm. Same thing with a couch. People will get like a small love seat because they're afraid of getting anything too big because it'll overwhelm the space. But then they need another love seat and some more chairs and a chaise. And by the time they do all of that, the space is so cluttered or they get small rugs, right? Like a little rug under the coffee table and then a little rug under the pair of chairs and a little rug over there by the entryway. And there's so many little rugs that it's visually cluttered and not really showing the space to its full advantage. So Mm. Look at your space, just like if you were dressing yourself, you would look at your body. What do I want to accentuate and what do I want to conceal, right? Mm -hmm. If I have really high ceilings, I want to make sure to incorporate really tall things so that I draw people's eye up to what's amazing. Mm -hmm. And if I have floors and I don't really like the stain, it just doesn't coordinate with my style, uh, but I want to conceal that, then use a large rug right? So just think about things you want to highlight. I love highlighting windows because Mm -hmm. it's like art that you don't have to buy. So you want to flank that with beautiful drapes and make sure that those drapes touch the floor. We don't want any cropped curtains unless we're designing some kind of country kitchen. Mm -hmm. So there's lots of different tips for lots of different elements, which I think is also why it can be overwhelming. There's so much to know. Mm -hmm. What about, I've heard people talk about the rule of three when it comes to design. Is that a thing? It is. It's okay. definitely, I don't call it the rule of three. What I call it is not using a lot of even numbers. Okay. So odd numbers feel more natural to us. They're more organic to the eye. In fact, a lot of it crosses over into plant life. When you look at like a maple leaf or whatever, mm-hmm. it generally has an odd number of points versus an even, mm-hmm. right? We're used to three leaf clovers and four leaf clovers are very rare, right? Mm-hmm. So odd numbers feel more organic and natural to us. So mm-hmm. I avoid too many pairs of two. So okay. many people are really addicted to like two floating shelves, two armchairs, um, just two, 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 like two pieces of art that fit together, but it can look a little like Noah's Ark. You really (laughs) want to avoid the trap of two. So I like one, three, five, or seven. I don't stick with only three, by the way. Interesting. Okay. Yeah. That's totally true. The, the odd number thing. Okay. So that's more about proportions when designing something. And when I'm layering out like a gallery wall, Mm -hmm. you know, I'll make sure that I have an odd number of frames, not an even number. If I want it to look kind of haphazard, like it just happened naturally. Like I just have style and wasn't trying too hard. It's when you do those so matchy matchy. That's right. That's right. So it just doesn't feel as easy. (laughs) 